Hey, welcome to Crafts with Ash. My name's Ashley and today I am so excited to bring you something that is very new to my channel, but not new to my life. So as long as I could remember, I have always loved to plan parties. I plan parties for nieces, for nephews, for cousins, just baby showers, wedding showers, uh, bachelorette parties, birthday parties, of course, just any kind of party you could think of, I'm going to throw it. In fact, if you're a big Friends fan like the TV show Friends, I just threw a party for their reunion that came on the, just the other day. So like I said, if there's a reason to throw a party, I'm going to throw it. I am a huge theme person, so the way that I work best are with themes. So if you give me a theme, I'm going to take it and I'm going to run with it. Party planning has always been in my heart and in my blood, and I just love for people to be wowed the second they come in through the door to an event. So today I'm going to share with you my very first party prep video, and this was for my daughter's Wizard of Oz fourth birthday party. Now, before we begin, I just want to address something. Yes, I know that this party is for a four-year-old. Yes, I know she may not remember all of it. Yes, I know that this party may have been a little big for just a birthday party in general. But please keep in mind, this is something that I absolutely love to do. It is a passion of mine. And not only that, I literally own a company with the name Party People. So I am a party person. I just love parties. It would be no different than if a dressmaker made a prom dress for their own daughter you would expect that prom dress to be amazing because it's what they do or for a baker to bake their daughter an amazing birthday cake because it's what they do it's no different so just please keep that in mind as you're watching this video you can take all the ideas I have to offer offer or you can take none or you can take a little bit here and there or you can just watch and enjoy and see how it all came together. So I just kind of wanted to approach that and get that out of the way before we get to the fun stuff. Also, I want to remind you, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Then join me over on Facebook and Instagram and become part of my crafting community. I share behind the scene content that I know you don't want to miss. All right, so today we are going to journey into the land of Oz for my daughter's fourth Wizard of Oz birthday party. And I am so excited to share all of this with you. I'm gonna show you a few DIYs and how I brought everything together. So I can show you how to have a budget-friendly birthday party that looks like it costs a million bucks, but really a lot of it came from the Dollar Tree and I did it myself and it really was not that hard. So I'm gonna teach you how you can do that too. So if you're ready, let's get to party planning and crafting and let's create something amazing. Amelia, did you have fun at your birthday party? Yeah. Yeah, who came to your birthday party? Dorothy and the Scarecrow! Dorothy and the Scarecrow! Oh my goodness! Are they going to get a sneak peek of what I do for a living, Amelia? Yeah. Yeah? Did you have so much fun? Yeah. Yeah? What was your favorite part? The scarecrow and Dorothy, yeah. And you got lots of presents, and did you eat cupcakes? Yeah. Yeah, it was lots of fun. Yeah, see the weather. Today, we're going to be building Emerald City, and to do this, I'm going to obviously be using some pool noodles. I bought like six or seven. I'm not quite sure how many I'm going to need, but I'm going to take you along this journey. My vision is that it's going to be all different like, uh, heights, so I'm going to be cutting some pool noodles up. Obviously, this is not the right color, too, so I'm going to be painting this, and um, I'm actually going to be painting them by hand because I heard that if you spray paint on these, they kind of, um, like, fizz up and, like, get weird, so I'm actually going to paint these by hand, and then we're going to hot glue them onto, I'm going to cut this board, and we're going to hot glue them here so it has some kind of... Um, you know, bake. And then this is what's going to be sitting on the table. Of course, it'll be covered and stuff as well. But I just wanted to kind of give you a rundown. So come with me as we're off to Oz. 
Okay, so like I said, I wanted to build Emerald City here, and this is going to go on the cake table, and I'm gonna have a rainbow arch over it and a cloud backdrop, and I really wanted it to look like Oz. So I saw this idea on Pinterest, and when I saw it, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I could totally recreate this with pool noodles. So what I did was I just cut off a little bit of that foam board just to create a base, and then I started with my tallest one first, so you're gonna see that I do that I did cut it off but I cut it off at an angle because as you look at pictures of Oz or Emerald City they are kind of at an angle up top so that's exactly what I did and I'm just using a regular kitchen knife here they cut like butter I mean of course you know if you've worked with pool noodles before they are so easy to cut so basically I just went through cut a bunch of different heights and then just started hot gluing them down then I noticed some gaps between the pool noodles so I would actually take some hot glue and glue them together side by side and I just did this until I felt like it really looked like Emerald City and then as you can see I definitely reinforced it at the bottom and hot glue seemed to work really well I, I thought that I might have to add in some super glue um, or e6000 or something but hot glue did the trick all in all I believe I only used four three or four pool noodles on this so obviously this was a very budget friendly DIY but it added so much detail I spend a lot of time on my cake table because I want that to be the wow factor and I think I really love how it came out while you watch me finish up building Emerald City, I just want to welcome you if you are new to my channel. I am so happy that you decided to stop by today. And if you are returning, thank you so much for all of your support. You have all been so amazing through my YouTube journey. And I was really excited to share this video, but I'm always really excited to share any video and any new DIYs with all of you. So if you would be so kind to hit that subscribe button, that would be great. And that way you can catch all of my upcoming content. So after I had all of my pool noodles glued down, I went ahead and I used some Christmas green paint from Apple Barrel, I believe that's what it's called, and I just painted the entire thing. I just used a foam brush, there's my little assistant. <laughs> oh, sorry, mom break, I have to put on her shoes. <laughs> uh, so I just used a foam brush and I just painted the entire thing. And I believe I might have given it two coats, that way you didn't really see any of the pool noodle. After it was kind of dry, I took some mod podge and this green glitter that I got from Hobby Lobby I mixed it in a cup and I did want this to be very sparkly so I put a lot of glitter in that cup and then I just mixed it in the cup and then I painted it on just like regular paint and I really loved how sparkly and just glamorous this came out I cannot wait for you to see the final reveal at the end to see how this all came together and I used all of my decor DIYs Now, while I was at Hobby Lobby, I picked up an O and a zine. Of course, I got these at 40 or 50% off, and I just did the same thing. I painted both of them in that green paint and then painted over those with the uh, glitter as well. And I believe I went over the Emerald City and the letters a few times with that mixture, and that completed our Emerald City and letters. So now it's time to move on to our next DIY. Hey guys, so today we're going to make the Wicked Witch of the East um, her legs that were under the house. So to do this, I'm gonna use a pool noodle and then I actually already had these, which is perfect. They're the white and black striped um, leggings or um, tights. So, um, but you can get them at any like party store, probably Amazon, stuff like that. So this is gonna be super easy. So all we're gonna do all we're gonna do is cut this in half so I'm just gonna fold it and then kind of try to figure out where the half is it, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect and then I'm just using a regular knife these cut really really well boom just like that and like I said it doesn't matter if they're not perfect because it I do have a house that's gonna go on top of this so it doesn't really matter and then all I'm gonna do is open up my tights 
and um, just put the tights on. Now I did see on Amazon that you can actually get this already made, so if you can't find the tights or if the tights are gonna cost just as much as the whole thing made, then just get them done. Some things you just gotta, you know, you just kinda have to decide like what's it worth to make and what's it not. So after I was done stuffing the noodles into the tights, I was trying to figure out figure out what I was going to do with the feet. If you look or Google an image, they are kind of like curled over. We did go back and end up stuffing some paper at the bottom to make it do that. Um, but for then, that at that moment I just left it and then I just tied a knot so the tights stayed on. All right, next we are going to start making the centerpieces for the tables. And yes, I know it's crazy, but I do make centerpieces. In fact, they're one of my favorite things to do. So I picked up these little hot air balloons off of Amazon, and there was a, it was a seven pack, and I believe it was only like seven or eight bucks. So you cannot beat that. So I went ahead and I opened it up, and then I stuck that little wire piece in there to make it stable. And then I didn't really want to use the bottom of it, like that round piece, so I just simply cut it off. I just kind of thought that that was cheapy, but not only that, but I needed these to stand. So next, I picked up these baskets at Hobby Lobby, and they were actually like, I think 60% off or, or super duper cheap. So I needed to take off the handle, so I just used my miter shears and cut them off. And then I just kind of used any tools that I had in my stash to get the little um, screw, they're not really screws, but they're just like tacks, uh, kind of thick tacks off on the side. So I go in with needle nose pliers, my wire cutters, whatever it took, I just wanted to get those out. I finally got those tacks out. I took four skewers and I hot glued one to each corner of my basket. Now I did use a lot of hot glue here because I really needed them to stay in there because this is what's going to hold up the paper mache hot air balloon. This is your friendly reminder that if you are loving what you see today, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really helps my channel to grow, but not only that, it tells YouTube that you like my content and you wanna see more. So I'd appreciate it if you like my video. So after I had all the skewers glued down, I just took some white Waverly chalk paint and painted each one of them. Once they were dry, I took that hot air balloon and I stuck it on top of the skewers and then I tacked it down where the skewers met the hot air balloon. I tacked it down with some hot glue. Now, as I started making more of these and I made six of these all together, I would put them side by side to make sure that they were all the same height. But I definitely wanted to put some hot glue there so that way the balloon didn't slip down. After that, I took some colored twine. Now, even though this is an orange hot air balloon, I didn't have orange, so I just used yellow, but on the other ones, I tried to coordinate the twine. And I just went ahead and hot glued the twine around the top of the basket. That way it gives it a little color. After my twine was glued down, it was time to make the little bags that hang off the hot air balloon. And so to do this, I took a 
piece of fabric that I got from the Dollar Tree and I got the whole roll from the Dollar Tree and then I just cut them into little squares now they did not have to be perfect squares because they were going to be folded anyways or kind of scrunched up which you'll see in a second so I just kind of eyeballed it I didn't measure or anything but I did go ahead and cut up a bunch of squares and I needed four for each centerpiece after that I took some coffee filters and this is only because this is what I had next to me that I thought would work because I usually put my paint in them when I paint and I balled it up and then I put it in the middle of each one of the fabric squares cut off some coordinating twine and then tied a double knot on the little bag but I did make sure to keep extra string attached and I went ahead and did four of them for each centerpiece like I said After all my bags were made, I took my hot air balloon and my basket and I tied one bag around each skewer in the corner of my basket and that's why I left that extra twine around the bags and I double knotted them and then I tacked it down in the basket with some hot glue and then I cut off the excess twine and then I did go back and I cut off a little bit of the fabric up top so it was all even and I did this on all four corners Next, I took this blue and white gingham fabric, or as I call it, Dorothy fabric, and I did get this at Hobby Lobby, and I think I, be I believe I got a quarter of a yard, and then I cut them into squares, so I had enough for six. And then I arranged it in the basket so it looked like it was pouring out. And then you saw I added just some simple stones or marbles just for weight, but you're not going to be able to see them. Then I tacked down each of the corners of the fabric to the basket so it didn't flop up. After that, I took these amazing poppies, and these were from Amazon, and I absolutely love these. Oh, they're so pretty, and they're so soft, too. And I cut off a little bit of the wire, because I do want a little bit of the wire still attached, and I put four in each basket. And that completed my super cute hot air balloon centerpieces, and I forgot to mention that all the hot air balloons came in different colors, so... Of course, the whole theme of Wizard of Oz is over the rainbow, so I really wanted this party to be so colorful, and I think I did just that. Once that was done, it was time to move on to our next project. So I got this for my daughter for Christmas, just something fun to do. Clearly, she did real well, kept her busy for two seconds. Um, but I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not going to throw it away because it's the perfect Auntie M house. So all I'm going to do is spray paint it, and I don't really know how this is going to work, but it's um, nutmeg. So I was trying to think of that color that, you know, was in the mid uh, the beginning of Wizard of Oz, how it's like that sepia color. So we're just going to go ahead and try to do this. And this is not the best day to be doing it because it uh, it's muddy as you can see but it is what it is mama's got to work so here we go Okay, so this is after one coat and I ran out of spray paint. Now I only did this side, the other side, and this front because the back is actually gonna be facing a wall so I didn't wanna waste spray paint. But I honestly think I'm gonna let this dry. I'm gonna get more at the store and I think two coats would will cover all of the black, like the writing. 
So now it is time for the final reveal. I'm gonna be honest, I had a lot more footage and DIYs to show you, but I lost a lot of it because I switched phones in the middle of recording and making all of these DIYs, and some of my videos did not transfer and I did not notice. So I apologize, but I will try to walk you through as much as I can and tell you what I did. But all of the major things I did, we actually did get footage of, so I apologize for that but now it's time for the final reveal what do you think Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you through it. So this was Munchkin Land when you first enter, and I I do make those balloon columns. All of the balloons I either got from Hobby Lobby, the Dollar Tree, or Amazon. I also got the columns from Amazon as well. There is our house, and then we're gonna follow the yellow brick road, which is actually yellow bulletin board paper, and yes, I did draw on all those squares. That tree actually came from my grandma's house, and then I just threw on some fake apples, and that sign was one of the DIYs that I lost, but I made it out of two Dollar Tree signs. The stand-up there that you saw came from Amazon. Next, I have the Melted Witch. Obviously, this is just a tablecloth, a hat that I already had, a witch broom I already had, a bucket I already had, and then that timer I did make, but I lost that footage too. All right, next I have the table settings. The napkins came from Oriental Trading. The forks came from Hobby Lobby during Valentine's Day. The cookies were locally made, but I did make the labels. And then there we go, there is our centerpiece. And the red sparkle runners came from Amazon, but I already had those because I, um, you know, like I said, I do parties. So here we go walking down the yellow brick road it did take me two hours to do all of those bricks I know that's crazy all right so walking up I have just two tables in the shape of a T this is a tablecloth going up and I had my husband draw bricks on there and then the little fringe um, table skirt that came from either Amazon or Oriental trading next I had all that green fabric already so I just laid it all out and then there is our Emerald City. Like I said, the um, backdrop came from Amazon, the clouds, and then this arch came from Amazon too, and it was so easy to do. I blew up all of the balloons beforehand, and then I stuck all of the arch on, or all of the balloons on the arch, and it was so easy. So now we're just going through all the food and the drinks and I can thank Pinterest for all of these ideas. I mean, why reinvent the wheel? They had some awesome ideas, so I just decided to just go ahead and do that. So then we also got a visit from Dorothy and the Scarecrow and this is a little sneak peek on what my company actually offers. So the main part of my business is that we do offer characters and boy are they talented. <laughs> so after they left, we opened some presents and that pretty much wrapped up the party. And I had so many compliments on how colorful it was and how nostalgic it was. And it took people back to their childhoods when they first saw The Wizard of Oz. So you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments what you think, what was your favorite part? Do you throw big parties? Do you throw little parties? Do you not? 
not throw parties at all. I know that this is kind of major, but like I said, and I'm really trying to stress, this is a huge passion of mine. I think you can tell with every detail that I just love throwing parties and just love wowing people. So I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, let me down, let me know down in the comments, do you want to see more of these party prep videos? I have a couple other events coming up, so I can definitely take you through those if you would like. All right, well, until I see you again, I will party prep and DIY with you soon. I'll see you somewhere over the rainbow. Bye!